Why, hello there, lovely one. We're looking at trigonometry questions that are found in the IAB paper 2 of November 2017. This is question 12. Question 12 says in the diagram below, three equal circles of a radius of three units are positioned so that they touch each other. BT is a vertical common tangent to two of the circles and CD is a horizontal common tangent to the same circles. Show that the length of BT is equals to that amount there. So the first thing we need to acknowledge is we are not quite sure of what that height is. But what we are sure of is that we have three circles that each have a radius of three. So if I do a rough drawing over there and connecting those circles together, I know that length's three, this one's three, 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 three. And of course we have this amazing tool called Pythagoras and we're going to work with just one of those triangles. The reason we're working with one of them is if we can figure out what that height is over there, then we can add the radius of the other two things, because that's also three and that's also three. So let's do that by using Pythagoras. We know that the hypotenuse squared, um, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where the c is the hypotenuse. We know that a is going to be three squared. I'm just choosing that over there. B, I'm not sure of, and C, I know, is going to be 6 squared. And I'm going to rearrange things so that I've got B is equals to, let's just multiply it out at the same time, 36 minus 9, which of course gives us an answer of 27. So B squared is equals to 27. Let me just highlight where B is. When I'm talking about B, I'm talking about that red line. Okay, now obviously I need to square root both sides and I'm going to get an answer of 3 square root 3. Now remember we said that the height of BT is going to be whatever the line, the length of the line B is, plus the 3 from the other radius, plus the 3 from the other radius, and that means therefore the length of BT is going to be, I'll do it in color, we've got 3 square root 3 from the previous thing and now we're adding 6 and that of course is what we were meant to prove. The next part of question 12 builds on the other part that we've just done. It says three identically sized cylinders are stacked on top of each other as shown in the diagram below. Here we go. They are anchored down by a piece of rope from A to B and another piece of rope to, from B to E. So A to B or B to A is over there and then we've got another piece of rope over there. It says A, C and D and E all lie on the same horizontal plane. The drawing isn't great, but what it's saying is A, sorry, let's just do that, there we go that A, um, <laughs> it's not going well, A, C, D, and E all lie on the ground. That's what they're saying, even though it doesn't look like it, but that's what they're telling us. The next thing they're telling us that is that B over there and C over here and D lie on the same vertical plane so that means they are above each other or below depending how you think of it and um, then it says that b is the highest point on the cylinder which of course is over there it says that the angle of elevation from a to b is 50 degrees and they have marked it over there they've also told us that b e a is 70 degrees so that's the angle between um, this particular rope and the line that extends to the other anchor point of the other rope and the radius of each cylinder is three meters and that's how I know it builds on to the other question. 
And in the previous question, we proved that from the top of the <laughs> circle up there to ground level, it had a length of this. The reason they ask the question like that in 12a is so that we can use that information when doing 12b, even if we didn't get the answer for 12a. So even if you look at this and you go, I don't know what I'm doing, use what's been given already. So the question number one says, calculate the length of AB, the rope required to anchor the cylinder down. Let's just make it obvious which one AB is, and it's going to be nice and thick over there. So like I just said, they're giving us this information so that we can figure out what's going on over here. I'm going to redraw the diagram. Let's just where I'm only going to draw from B to T, so B, where T is on the ground level, right in the middle over there. And then I'm going to draw that other point that we need, which is A. And I also know they've told us that that's 50 degrees. And of course, because that's on the ground, that's 90 degrees. We've been told that this over here, BT, is 3 square root 3 plus 6. And we're going to use all of that information when figuring out what AB is. And of course, it is a right angle triangle. So I'm just going to have to look at my usual trig ratios. Remember right in the beginning when you first learned trig, uh, you used an abbreviation that looks something like that. You want to know what this over here is. It is the hypotenuse. You've got this angle down here because that is opposite. We know we're using sine and it's going to be of 50 degrees. This pen is very thick. Is equals to opposite, which is 3 square root 3 plus 6 over hypotenuse, which is going to be AB. And we can rearrange it, but first let me make some space so that we have AB is equals to, and the numerator is still 3 square root 3 plus 6, except now it's over sine of 50 degrees. You have a calculator that you'll use to get the answer 14 and it's going to be 6155 blah 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 let's round it up to well round it off to 14.62 meters okay so now let's take a look at the next question which says if the second rope of EB has a length of 13 meters, then determine the straight line distance between E and A. I'm actually going to redraw this triangle that's happening there because it will make my life easier. So as I draw this, I want you to see or pay attention to the fact that this is not a right angle triangle which means we can't use normal sine cos tan. We have to do something else. Brilliant. Um, and this was B, and this was A, and this was E. And we're told that this over here is 13. We need to figure out what EA is. This means we're either going to use the area rule or the cosine rule, or we're going to use the sine rule. In order to use the area rule, we do need to be talking about area, and that's not happening. In order to use the cosine rule, we're going to need to figure out what the angle of V is so that we can figure out what the length of EA is. And we're going to have to do the same for the sine rule. We still need to figure out what the angle of V is. The easiest way to do this would then be to use the sine rule to figure out what angle A is and then look for angles in a triangle because they add up to 180 degrees. So with the sine rule, you must make sure that the angle you've used over here, sine 70, is opposite the same length side. So this and those are opposite each other. And then, of course, I have 
13 and A that are on opposite each other as well. The other thing you've noticed now, hopefully you've noticed, is I've got the signs on the top and the numbers on the bottom, the lengths of the sides at the bottom. It doesn't actually matter whether you put A on top of sign A or you put sign A on top of A as long as they're the same on both sides. So if you've got sign on the top on the one side, then you need to have it on the bottom top on the other side as well. So now I'm going to do some fancy calculations. I multiplied both sides by 13 and then of course I did sign to the negative one to get this over here, 56.68. Um, let's just make the triangle more clear. So at this point, I know I have 70 degrees here. I now have 56.68 degrees over here. So that means I can work out what B is by using angles in a triangle. That means I've got 180 minus 70 minus 56.68. It's always a good idea to tell your marker what you're doing. So I'm doing angles in a triangle which means that B is equals to 53.32 degrees. Let's fill it in over there, 53.32. And I can now use a sign rule because I've got those two that are opposite each other. And I'm also going to use the 70 was opposite and throw it in. It was opposite 14. 0.62 and I'll highlight it red as well and that's what I've done over here I've done the sign rule this time I've got the length of the side on top and I've manipulated it by multiplying both signs by sine of 53 comma 32 degrees and I got an answer of 12 comma 48 well that's it from me for now much love